Recovery by Sophie Gresswell. Sophie? Hi. Surgery went well. We're in recovery now. We'll be taking you down to the ward soon. Just try and rest. Ah, oh. oh, night one. Fluid keeps escaping from one orifice or another. The pain even tears open tear ducts and spills bitter, sweet saline. Ah, oh, morphine. The pain eases. Sometimes it helps to flow with the heaviness, letting fluid pain flow into frigid bed, soaking sheets through, pulling me under. Sometimes it helps. Day two, sleep takes over and my bed is a black hole. It sucks me in, devours the hours. Drip drop, tick tock. My accordion spine is out of tune, but I can play the piss pipe beautifully. My husband used to dance to this one. Useless it was, too little effort. Lucky for him, it was a looker. <laughs> Smile like sunshine, thank God. Day three. They come to me in their all-knowing glory. It's early morning and a fine glow surrounds their silhouettes, as if the light shines out of their behinds to illuminate and enhance their positions. I wait for them to lay healing hands upon me, wash away my pain so I can walk again. Right, Sophie, uh, you seem to be doing well. We'll have you up and out by next week. That's it. It's all over before it begins. They don't even stay for breakfast. They just up and leave, waltzing off into their derriere sunset, satisfied, sanctified saviours. I pray they raise me up, bit by bit. But flesh and blood get a head rush, lines blur, and I can't tell my arse from my elbow. Eyes closed, the windows are on the floor. Open, now they're on the wall, spinning upwards to paint a Sistine ceiling. I sit on the chair, and it rises up like a rapture. But I think I'm high. Virtue and vertigo encircle me. I look up at the heavens, gravity bound. I open my mouth, and I sing a vomit sunrise over my hospital gown. Day three and a half, I think. They wake me from my lumber slumber and swaddle me like a babe, pig in blanket. Mummify me and take me away. Sausage roll. They leave. I can't move. Caught in headlights, I'm sent head first into the dark. Tunnel vision. The curved wall bears down on top of me. Swine, close your eyes and think of England. Are you OK? We'll begin the scan now. The voices start. Late, 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 wait, wait. Do what, do what, do what, that, 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 dad, dad, dad. Ham, ham. Red alert. They bring me round and save my bacon. We're about halfway through now. We're just going to give an injection and then we'll carry on. You're doing really well. The voices stop. The needle is in. Pork scratching. The coldness carries up my veins, round my brain and down again. Send me back down that rabbit hole of history. 
through pig-headed past. Madness is hereditary. Some animals are still more equal than others, so I'll go round in circles, 360 degrees, like a pair of Alice's soiled undies. Help me go. Having a green tea in the morning. Get things moving, if you know what I mean. Thanks, Elena. I'll try that. <laughs> Day four. Regaining the throne. <laughs> now I really am full of shit. Swollen and taut, like an expectant mother to an overdue turd. There is no tenderness in this pregnancy. In fact, quite the opposite. Coal babies. Hard, black and unloving, little shits. They cling to me and I to them. Why the f*** am I eating this porridge? This takes me back to before. She came with me to the scan. She crafted a bed from two chairs so she could stay with me through the night, full of tenderness. I clung to her. She carried me again, not in her stomach this time, but on her shoulders. Her light seeped through the fracture lines. Her warmth eases my pain every day. for you, Maureen. The nurse will be here soon. Morning, ladies. Fast forward again to face day 10. Oh, you wanted when my friend said something about you, okay, which I made me uncomfortable, she ran with prejudice and I stood still. I should have told her of the way you welcome the day. Oh. Breathing sunshine warmth onto a sterile ward. I should have dredged up the sounds of our ocean abyss. Sifted through the ship, polluting our pastime pathways and let tributaries flow into each other. How else can you get to life's beating heart when eye to eye is worlds apart? I should have proclaimed my love for your deep voice. Those thicker tones brought from home, rich as fudge cake flat on my back, squeezed dry as a juice lemon's bitter remains. I savoured that taste of sweet sugar cane. Nurse! Give me a minute, Maureen. You even brought me breakfast in bed, like a loved one. You bent over routine and regulations to reach out to me. Mm -hmm. Breakfast, please. Tough love, like ripping a plaster away. That not quite question punctuated my day. I'd put in my order and your guttural hum accepted my plea for toast and tea. Hmm. I should have told her how much that comforted me. I suppose you could be abrasive, but sometimes rough hands can smooth jagged rocks into white sands. And you were never precious, no pity. A glint of understanding swam in your sunken eyes. A guiding light, willing me to say for sure. Get strong and go home. You carried me. Sophie, how are you today, lovely lady? Perhaps I should have told her how it made me feel. My friend said that to me, without a flinch or a thought. Perhaps that is the worst thing of all. That I would play my tiny violin on a sinking ship and she would clap for claptrap, support poster boys with children's toys, bollocks, spread wide on big red buses, as you shelter by the bus stop, in line to board the number 91, which brings you to the mothership 
and docks you at the jaws of its automatic doors. The HMS NHS, where you serve to turn the tide, one patient at a time. My friend saw none of you in me. Your salty sweet waves crash into a wide black sea, which washed out in me through history. But your home is here and I am still your sister. Without you, I wouldn't be here. I should have defended you. I should have said something. Risk burst backwaters flash flooding our throats. Risk rising levels reaching round my eyeballs and salt sting rolling down my tongue. Spitting speeches sharp enough to wreck a friendship. My backbone buckled under that pressure. <sighs> Spineless, drowning in doubt. Each bulging breath choked away any words. They still bubble beneath the surface. Today is day 12. D-Day. Discharge. Tumour seized. Mission complete. A full recovery expected. Time heals. Time isn't all it takes. And recovery is a funny word. I'll leave you at day 19. A week ago, I was sent home, back into the arms of family. The pain still creeps up on me sometimes, but mainly I recall the sounds of the lives. Beating hearts ringing in my ears. Our survival mattered, and briefly, age-old barriers shattered. Opposite me was Maureen, Nan of the ward. Age held her bent over, but she had spice left. One taste of life could straighten her spine and bring her right back. I press my buzzer for Maureen sometimes, when she couldn't reach. I've pressed my buzzer for you, Maureen. The nurse will be here soon. Elena was to the left of Maureen. Younger than me, watching her flame grow, I caught fire. She was contagious. Visitors used to bundle in, huddle behind her curtain and pretend they hadn't seen the sign. Only two visitors are allowed at a time. They would smuggle in pizza and warm themselves at her feet. You know what helped me go? Having a green tea in the morning. Get things moving, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Elena, if you're listening, that green tea worked a treat. Aveline was next to me. Obscured by a curtain, nothing could hide away that shining emerald. Oh, that'll be my little old husband now. <laughs> Summoning in a short Filipino man wrapped in a woolly jumper, who pulled back the curtain and offered up chocolates as sweet as his smile, ending partition. Aveline was blue-eyed and blind, but her colourful tongue could paint a vision. Diane was my nurse. She called me lovely lady. Sophie, how are you today, lovely lady? Her sunshine smile and patois pulse would always ease the passage of any injection on the horizon. She and her sisters stitched wards together and made us all one. Today, I'm home. Still shuffling around, but learning to cope. And now it strikes me, fast and sharp, like fresh air on an exposed nerve. The realisation that entwined in the scar tissue are the sounds that I heard, and the people, and the everlasting hope. That was Recovery by Sophie Gresswell. The narrator was played by Sophie Gresswell. Alina and Maureen were played by Alison Jones. Aveline was played by Joe Nolan. Doctor One and Nurse were played by Stephanie Tavanier. The broadcast assistant was Tolly Robinson. Music was by Christian Doyle, with sound design by David Thomas. The executive producers were Caroline Raphael and Alison Vernon-Smith. That was a Screen South production for new creatives, supported by Arts Council England and BBC Arts. It was produced by Peer Productions Limited. <laughs>